Now quickly, we're going to the next church, Pergamum. That's Pergamus. We're standing in the Forum of Pergamus, and that's the Cardo, the main road with all the columns. But look up on the hill. Do you see the dark spots up there on the hill? We're going there in a minute. That's the massive theater. I mean, Bonnie and I, it's one of the steepest theaters. Uh, we, when we were there the last time, it's one of those places where you have to hold the handrails. It's like going down a ladder. But Pergamus was an amazing city. But look what it says in the right. Beware of the power of unforsaken secret sins. That's what's going on that Jesus found when he walked around. That's where Pergamos is. The question for all of us is, are you resisting sin? And look what Jesus says to them in verse 12. To the angel of the church in Pergamos, write, these things says he who has a sharp two-edged sword. Whoa, that's quoting from somewhere. Where? That's Hebrews 4, 12, and 13. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any what? Two-edged sword. So what he's saying is, I'm the one that has the sword in my mouth, and when I speak, it should be cutting in your heart and doing its work. And now he speaks, verse 13. I know your works. I know where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. I know you hold fast to my name. Look at this. You did not deny my faith in the days of Antipas. So they already had someone, Polycarp isn't named in Smyrna, they already had a martyr in Pergamos. His name was Antipas, my faithful martyr, who was killed among you, where Satan dwells. Now, take this apart and think about all the truths you just learned. Don't forget, Jesus knows all about our spiritual life. He's writing to a group of people that are still associating with the church in Pergamos after one of them was dragged off and killed. Would you go back to church if the Florida state troopers came in and dragged someone out of your church and killed them? You might have a cold <laughs> next week and not go to church. Do you understand what I mean? Do you understand they were still, a, if they heard this letter, they were gathering with the church and the church was suffering martyrdom. Jesus knows that. He knows about our life. But did it catch your attention what was said twice? Notice that where Satan dwells? Is that figurative? Is that allegorical? Is that symbolic? Have you ever thought about that? And do you remember how every church, whatever Jesus says, exactly zeroes in on something in that church? Well, this, do you remember I told you you'd see that dark spot? We're going to be there in a minute up by the theater. The dark spot you see there are those trees. Those trees are built around the ruins of what was called the altar or seat of Zeus. You know who Zeus is? The king of the Greek, the Greco-Roman world. Actually, it's Jupiter in Rome, Zeus to the Greeks, but it's the same person. Uh, one of Satan's chief emissaries, Zeus, okay? The Greeks and Romans built the throne. Now, Zeus supposedly lived on Mount Olympus, and Mount Olympus is kind of past, you know, it, if you go to Philippi, it's to the left on the map. It's west of Philippi. It's kind of north of Athens. So if you go directly from Thessalonica and Philippi north, you hit Mount Olympus, you know. But nobody, Bonnie and I drove to Mount Olympus when we were teaching our class over there a couple years ago. We drove up to Mount Olympus. It was very hard. In fact, it snowed while we were up there. And we had to turn around and come back. It was like a blizzard in warm weather. It was terrible. It's kind of like going to Mount Everest, you know, only it's shorter. So people didn't get up there very much. So what they did is they built that so they could see his throne. And the reason it's not there now is, guess where it is? It's in Berlin today. It, that throne of Zeus is in Berlin. How did it get there? Hitler brought it. See, Hitler was really into the occult, and he heard that Satan was directly associated because Hitler knew what the Bible said. Do you notice what it says twice in this passage? where Satan's throne is, in verse 13. And then it says, where Satan dwells. Okay, here's a lesson we need to think about. Only God the Father and Son and Spirit are omnipresent. Satan and his demons are not. Did you know, right now, Satan is only one place at a time. You ever heard someone say, the devil made me do it? People say that all over the world. He did not. He's only in one place at a time. Satan is localized. Jesus is not. Jesus is omnipresent. The Spirit is omnipresent. 
The Father is omnipresent. That's one of the qualities, the systematic theological attributes of God. Satan is in one place at a time. Where did Satan have his headquarters in 95 AD? This town, Pergamos. It says it twice. It says, you are where Satan's throne is. Now that was the altar of Zeus, but Zeus is a false god, and Paul already told us in 1 Corinthians, behind every idol is a demon. Well, that was an idol to Zeus, and it wasn't a demon behind it. Guess who was there? Satan himself actually lived in Pergamos. How would you like to live where Satan lives? Can you imagine? Uh, Bonnie and I, when we work with church planners in Japan, we go to, and, and it's still like it, we go to Kyoto, you know, the old ancestral capital of Japan, Kyoto. Do you know what they worship in Japan? The dead. They revere the dead. They worship their ancestors who have died. When you go to Kyoto, most people, it's the most phenomenal thing, the hair will stand up on your arms. It's like electromagnetic, the back of your neck. You feel, you feel something because there's so many demons around those Shinto shrines where they worship the dead. They, they know they're there. Do you know what they do, the Japanese? They pile pyramids of pure white salt in all the doorways. When you go, to, if you guys go to Kyoto, you'll see in the doorway a pyramid of white salt. And I went to the, the guide and I said, what, are, what is that? They said, oh, that keeps the demons inside the building. I thought, wow, <laughs> isn't that amazing? They know they're there and they think they can stop them. Well, what, what does Satan do? He produces fear. So what does the Lord say? Fear can surround you. You can live surrounded by Satan and fear but it doesn't control you. So look at verse 13. I know your works, where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, but you hold fast to my name. You did not deny my faith, even in the days when Antipas was my faithful martyr who was killed among you. We can live around horrible, fearful things, but it doesn't have to control us. 